Is your internet traffic secure? TLDR, no, but we're getting there. For the sake of simplicity, let's say there's two kinds of traffic on the internet, encrypted and unencrypted, or what we like to call plain text since it's just plain as day going across the wire. Similarly, there's all sorts of things that you can do on the internet and they fall into a spectrum of like really easy to do and quite difficult. So here's some examples. Let's say you want to go to a website that begins with HTTP. Well, that's stupid simple. You just type the address into the browser. It's also plain text, so it's far from secure. How about sending an email? Again, really easy. Open your mail client, type in the address, and off it goes. Just as before, it's plain text. How about chatting with your mates on Dust2 and saying, hey, let's rush bombsite B? Again, easy, but plain text. Also, take the tunnel route because the CTs camp the double doors. Now, when the internet started back in the 60s, almost everything was plain text. Back then, the internet was a government research project, and it was difficult enough just getting the whole thing to work, let alone secure it. I mean, the first message sent across the internet was supposed to be login, but the system crashed after the second letter. So I guess you could say the first message online was low. Anyway, messages on the internet have to get forwarded from node to node to node until finally meeting their destination, and a lot of the early work was just focused on making the whole thing not fall over. It was a much simpler time. Sysadmins were sysops, servers were mainframes, and plaintext telnet was used because SSH hadn't been invented yet. By the very early 90s, less than 1% of the planet had internet access, unlike today where about half the population's online. Then in 1991, people figured, hey, maybe plaintext isn't the best way to send email since every node in between me and you can read the message, kind of like a postcard. And a wizard by the name of Phil Zimmerman came around and invented encrypted email and called it PGP for pretty good privacy. And it was pretty good, but it was hard to use, and in the nearly three decades since, it hasn't really gone mainstream. In 1993, Al Gore helped turn that internet that was government controlled into the privatized internet that we know and love today. Amazon, AOL, Zombocom, and every dot com in between popped up. There was a September that never ended, and suddenly there was a need for encryption. Because shopping. Come 1994, the dominant web browser of the time, Netscape, adopted SSL and encrypted web pages were born with the now familiar HTTPS. As a technology, HTTPS was both secure and easy. You just had to type in the address in the browser. Over time, the lock icon and the technology behind it would evolve and get more secure. By the mid-2000s, HTTPS had made online banking and online shopping so commonplace that we now have a term for getting an Amazon box and not remembering what's in it. By 2010, social media had gone mainstream, but HTTPS adoption hadn't. That would all change with a browser plugin called Firesheep that showed the masses how easy it was to eavesdrop on and mess with plain text HTTP traffic. Between all the news about HTTP not being secure and the privacy concerns over all the stuff we're sharing on social media, major sites like Facebook and Twitter made HTTPS the default. In 2013, a little fuel was added to the fire when NSA whistleblower Edward Snowden caused a media frenzy over the large-scale internet eavesdropping operations being conducted by governments around the world. By now, with a little help from cool technologies like Let's Encrypt, we have an internet that has more secure HTTPS sites than plain text HTTP sites. The modern era has led to some good news and bad news. On the one hand, there's constant revelations about misuse of private data and major site breaches and on the other, as a society that values privacy and security, we've been keen to adopt new security technologies, just as long as they're easy. So while a previous generation of secure technologies like PGP and proprietary VPNs have only found niche uses, a new generation of easy-to-use security technologies have emerged and gained mainstream adoption. And while there's still a ton of plain text and easily exploited systems out there today, the landscape has changed dramatically. Perhaps it's wishful thinking. But we may be headed towards a world where secure is the new default. Secure is easy, and you don't need a tinfoil hat to care about privacy. In the next part, we're going to look at how a new security technology is being introduced that may reshape the inner workings of the internet. But what do you think? Do you do anything special to secure your internet traffic? Let me know in the comments. And be sure to like and subscribe. If you want to support us directly, you can get some cool custom-made hacking gear from our online store. Until next time, I'm Darren Kitchen. Trust your technolust. Domain.com has all your website needs, from .com and .net domains to intuitive website builders so you can take that first step in creating your online identity. Let me tell you, there's no domain extension like a .com or a .net, or if you want to brand yourself, Domain.com has over 300 domain extensions like .club and .space, 
These guys are huge fans of Hack5. They're affordable, reliable. We've been using them for years. They've got all the tools you need to share your ideas with the world. And because they're such big fans, they are hooking you up with 15% off their already affordable prices. So get domain names and web hosting and email, and just be sure to use that coupon code HAK5. So when you think domain names, think domain.com.